Uh, tell me your name. My name is uh, Reverend Ben David Henson. Okay, and which church do you, are you a minister of? Yes, I'm um, this, an associate pastor at Oklahoma United Methodist in uh, Uptown Dallas. In, in Uptown Dallas. Okay, so tell me, um, you were just here for the meeting with Senator Don Huffines. Yes. Um, I take it you agreed, you disagreed with them on a number of things. On a number of things. Not everything, but there are a few key things. On the issue yeah. of abortion, though, I, I get the impression that you are pro-abortion or no. pro-choice. Yes. Okay, so... Um, Defend that from a Christian point of view when you have, say, Jeremiah says, you know, David says, you know, when I was in my mother's womb, you knew me. Jeremiah talks about being called in his mother's womb. So how do you, you know, these, these people are saying, I was a living, sentient being in my mother's womb. And the, the, the pro-choice says, it doesn't make a difference with the killer, him or her. So, okay, uh, a few things. Um, I would challenge anyone who assumes that uh, the vast majority of people who get abortions are doing it from a very casual, relaxed, oh, we're just going to kill it kind of attitude. Right. Um, no, there are some. Sure, but there are always exceptions, right? Right. You know, we're, uh, there are millions of people in the world. But I would say... Do you think they're ever pressured into it when they don't really want to do it? I think that sometimes kids are pressured to get abortions. Um, I'm not. I'm. And do, do you think so, there's full disclosure to the women going in for the, the abortion that hey, you know what, this is a child. You know, this this child has a heartbeat, got a different blood supply. No, I, I don't know if that's the issue. I think sometimes there are young girls. Okay, so here's one issue where abortion is coerced in women is okay. when you're trafficked. Okay. So women who are uh, trafficked sexually. Mm -hmm. I, there probably is quite a, a large amount of forced abortion. Mm -hmm. Here's my position personally on abortion. First okay. of all, I don't think it's a very black and white issue, so I will say that in name. Okay. Um, I find abortions and the reality of abortion to be a tragedy. Mm -hmm. I am not pro-abortion. Okay. I don't support it. Mm -hmm. However, what I do recognize is that a, there are some times where uh, there are medically appropriate reasons to get an abortion. Sometimes I recognize that people get an abortion and then regret it for the rest of their lives and are stigmatized uh, perpetually for it by the church. Well, even if they're not stigmatized, so, because I know many churches that are very accepting and try to bring, bring healing, but the individual who's had the abortion, as you've said, I knew somebody who 30 said, I had an abortion. He would have been 31 years old and then as I talked to her more she said actually I had two and here she is 30 years later and that's tragic I will I would never ever say raha let's go and have an abortion that's not that's not my standpoint right. it's not the standpoint of the United Methodist Church it certainly was not the standpoint of John Wesley because to John Wesley abortion was sin I don't know that, but sure. Well, you, um, you can look and read that in his writings. I will. Uh, Absolutely. The United Methodist Church, however, has a, a pretty, uh, I really think, a very even-handed and uh, thorough uh, attempt to try and craft a statement about the church's beliefs on abortion. Um, and what it says is that we believe that abortion is a tragedy. We do not support abortion. We oppose, uh, but we oppose the stigmatizing of people who have abortions and we oppose the church's condemnation of folks who have abortions. So let me try a different route then. Sure. So I think, and this, you know, this is going to sound bad if you take me out of context. Okay. So let's let every child be born, but after they're born, the mother and the father have up to three months to kill the baby. Okay. And and there's no there's no crime attached to it. They they have the baby born but then they can kill the baby anytime within three months, and that's fine. How would you feel about that? I would find that to be tragic. So would you find it to be reprehensible? Would you consider that to be murder? Murder? I mean... Okay, wait a minute. You know, let, let's be honest. I mean, back in the Roman culture... I, the, the well, right, for, wait, hold on, hold right. on. So I, I find that to throw the word murder on this whole conversation is part of the problem, because when you... No, I'm talking about the situation between the zero month to three month. In, in the scenario that I'm talking about, mm -hmm. when I've said, let every woman give birth, but the parents have up to three months to kill the baby. I don't find this analogy to be useful because it well, wouldn't happen. Well, why not? Because basically, you know, you have children that are born at six months of age 
and they go into a pre-meat ward and yeah. they live. Mm -hmm. But you have other children that are, and I'm going to say use the word intentionally, killed in the womb month seven, month eight, even later than that. Yes. So, uh, I mean, I, I have a hard time, um, and I'm going to say, I said six months, what about at five months? There are children that, that are born at five months that survive. So, you have a child at five months who can survive, but you can also abort children, and all it is is a matter of location. Rather than being outside the womb, the child is inside the womb, so that's okay. Outside the womb, if somebody went up, you know what, I don't like this baby, I'm going to smash its skull, I'm going to chop off its head, I'm going to rip its limbs apart, we would put that person in jail. Whether it be the parent, whether it be a doctor, whether it be a criminal, a thug, but when the child is inside the womb, um, we don't see it. Right. And, we, and, we, and we make it nice because we go into a, a sanitary system and we have, it's, it's, you know, it's such a sterile procedure, which is a lot of nonsense as well. I, I know Gosnell, you know, up in Pennsylvania, up in the Philadelphia area, the stuff that he did. Um, you look at the people who were former abortionists who have now said, we no longer do abortion and talk to them and see what they say. Or like you said, I mean, the women that have had a, their abortion and 30 years later, they're still being haunted by it. So I, I use the word murder so, intentionally and killing intentionally sure. because of the whole... So what's the question? So the question is, um, regarding the, the abortion issue, um, you say it's tragic. I do. But you, don't, but you never use a word like um, the unborn child is being killed. The unborn child is being murdered. The unborn, life is ha the unborn child is having its life taken away from him or her. And, and I also look too from a constitutional point of view. If you look at the Declaration of Independence where it talks about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, one of those rights guaranteed to an individual. Now, as a Christian, you have to agree that life begins in the womb. It does not begin at birth. So personhood begins in the womb. Now, you might say, well, look, it, it, you, you may say it doesn't happen at conception. Maybe it happens at 28 days when they can hear the heartbeat. I don't, I don't really have like a hard line on that because I am not a scientist or someone who studies uh, gynecology. So, right. so here's what I'll say. Um, it's tragic, but I tend to look at the life of a child in the womb in the context of the entire life that's involved in conception. Mm -hmm. So I think that I can't look at the value of a child's life without looking at the value of the life of the mother. I can't look at the value of a child's life outside of the context of the mother's life and the situation that the mother's going through. I also simply can't assume to know that every single occasion where a woman gets an abortion is an occasion where it's murder and that the woman is wrong. I just cannot, I cannot as a person okay. know that. So, all I can say from the position of being a clergy person in the United Methodist Church okay. is that I promise to be the presence of Christ to the best of my ability to anyone who has had an abortion. I promise We're to be... We're not talking about anybody who's had... We're talking about people who are contemplating having one. What you're saying about... And I would say to them, I would not ever encourage abortion. Let me make that abundantly would clear. Would you go with them in the abortion room and say, I'm going to hold your hand? Or like I've heard some ministers say, you know what, I, I, I'm going to be ministering Jesus to this person who's now... And I'm going to say it, killing the baby or having I would an never ever abandon someone who is forced into making a decision like that. Whether well, they're forced well, by someone else okay. or themselves. So, okay. look, well, I also have to is, go. I know. I also have to go. So, like, but, is, but you do realize that there's some, there's some contradictions between... Yes, there is. There's lots of contradictions right. in Scripture, And too. Jesus... No, I'm saying that, you know, Jesus... There's lots of contradictions in our theology. To me. There's lots of contradictions, and that also is kind of the reality of life. Well, really, thank you so much I appreciate for giving it. the time. Thanks, thank you so much, too. We'll talk again. Thanks.